Hello everyone. It is uh, Sunday, February 23rd. I just got home from church and uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to put it into words, but if you, any of you guys want to see like a really over the top church that is just magnifying God, come visit this church. It's called Fresh Start Ministries. I spent most of church service today on my knees. I was so blown away by how awesome things were. So anyways, um, there was a lady that came when they were doing testimonies. People would go up there and give a testimony. I did one, by the way, but I'm not going to talk about that. But this lady went up there and she talked about needing to sell um, $10 tickets for dinners. She was raising a fund for someone. And took her story and there's a lady that said she posts things about Facebook on her Facebook page about God and people are telling her she's crazy do not do not I know that <laughs> I'm not gonna say a name but yeah I know somebody who's calling me crazy so uh, <clears throat> she I talked to her afterwards and I like that about what she talked about that she's not gonna stop so got her name <clears throat> I'm gonna Facebook friend her and so she can see all the videos and we can champion saying the name Jesus always. Well, anyways, the minister or the pastor there did say that today, like, for a long time, man. Jesus, 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 over and over. And there's power in that word. And I got fired from Art Van for saying Jesus. It was either Jesus or blessing, one or the other. Those two words got me fired. Anyways, I was walking out of the door there. Remember the one lady said she wanted to get $10 for dinner tickets. I didn't have the money. And uh, so I'm walking out the door and I'm talking to the bass player. We're having a great conversation about some stuff. I mean, there's way too much to talk about right now, but I just want to get this message across real quick. God is everywhere. Christ is everywhere. He's everyone. He's omniscient everywhere. And like I said on my very first video, I see God or Jesus. I see Jesus in others. And then I see in others who I used to be when I wasn't with Jesus fully. And so when I'm at that church and that man's talking, I see Jesus Christ. So anyways, I'm walking out the door. The bass player and I are talking. And... There's that lady, and we got to talking about <clears throat> her Facebook thing. And we tried to find me on Facebook, man, and I wouldn't appear. And then there's another lady that I, lives in a different city, and she's just somebody I met. And man, we had a great discussion about God, and she's on my Facebook now. And she found me because I couldn't find her. She found me. She went on Facebook, typed my name in, and boom, I was right there. But we did it on this girl's phone, and. I even tried it, and I, I wouldn't come up. So she gave me her name, and I marched on out of there. Now my way out, there was that lady. I was talking to the bass player man. There was that lady um, about the ten dollars again. And the bass player and I were talking, and on the way out, she said, uh, "I want to buy a couple tickets for dinner." And I stopped, and we paused, and I said, "I'm broke. I don't have any money. I got shut off notices, and I can't afford it." And remember how I said, you know, <laughs> when you're with Christ, you see Christ in others. You know, Christ is in me, but not fully. He does leave and let Satan come in. Or I let Satan come in, I should say. But then I quickly get rid of him. Go! Get out! <laughs> come back, Jesus. Come back here. <laughs> so like yesterday at Art Van, when that man said, we can't hire you. And then I said, oh, but I won't speak his name anymore. That was... That was somebody else stepping into my mind because I should have just said, that's okay. I don't need this job anyways, and left. So anyways, <clears throat> that uh, I'm walking out, and that lady says, you know, you want to buy the tickets. I said, well, I'm broke. I can't afford it. And she, she, but not she, because if you understand everything I'm talking about, God was talking to me, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, whatever. And so, let me see what this is. Those people that defraud you. So she uh, she looked at me and I said, you know, I can't afford that. And then she says to me right away without hesitation, shh, don't say you can't afford it. Don't say you're broke because God has so much more for you you don't even know. 
You're, you have more money than you'll ever know coming. It's coming. I believe that. I believe I have a business idea that'll do that. I just need to get a job to help pay for it. So, and then there was a whole other thing too. Real quick, there's a lady that went on and gave a testimony about working for Garden White, the place that I went and hopefully I'm getting a job. But they said that I have to work full time and if I work on Sundays, I don't want to work on Sundays because I want to praise God on Sundays. So she went up there today and where does she work? At Garden White and doesn't work on Sundays. So I talked to her. So, but anyways, so that lady, when she said that, wasn't her saying, don't worry, God's bringing you money. Man, they don't give up, those people who want to sell you Google ads. So I said, okay, you're right. You're right, I shouldn't do that. And so I was focusing on her. The base man was sitting next to me waiting to talk to me. And I was looking at her. And out of, out of the periphery of my eyes, a shadow appeared. Next to me, grabbed my hand, shook it, and in my ear said, God bless you. The hand left, and there was something crumbly in my hand. I paused, looked at my hand, it was a $20 bill. I looked over, it was a kid, about 16, 17 years old. If you've listened to everything that I've said here, Colossians 3, Christ is all and is in all. All right, so I'm not going to tell you who it was. You can figure that out for yourself. I didn't pause. I didn't think about $20 I didn't have. I immediately looked at that woman and said, now I can afford two of those lunches. So, where I did wrong yesterday, and I thought about fear, you know, oh, you know, please help me, you know, I need this job. I don't need that money either. There's, there's so much psychology in that, I can't even tell you. One of the very first lessons I learned in my lessons of life, when I was about 22 years old, I, uh, I wanted change in my life. I went through the divorce from my first wife, and I was just starting my moving company, and I was really watching PBS a lot. This woman, uh, Susie Orman, I'm sure you all know who she is. She came in, and she was on one of their fundraisers, and if you donate money to me, um, you can have this learning tool that I have. It was a video or, or a CD or cassette way back. I had it for a while. I don't even know what happened to it, but I never really listened to it. What I, what I only focused on was this. She said it on the TV and I, I, I'm glad I gave money to PBS because, you know, they used to do good things. I don't agree with them now because they do a lot of stuff I don't agree with, but whatever. So she said this and she used her hands and she said, Okay, I want you to understand about this about money. And I, I was just starting to make money then. She said, if you hold out your hands and I give you a bunch of money, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to hold it because you're afraid it's going to fall out? I'm paraphrasing, but this is, this is what she meant. Are you going to hold it so it doesn't fall out? Isn't that like, you know, you made so much money and you got to keep it because... You're worried you're not going to be able to replace it? Isn't it disempowering to think that you have to hold it and not give it away? Because aren't you telling yourself you can't replace it? So she opened her hands back up and she says, If I give you money and I fill your hands, keep them open or there won't be room for more. I made so much money after watching that video. I can't even tell you. 
massive amounts of money. You know, I only have a I only have a general education diploma. I wasn't supposed to have that life. Man, I made Muku Box. But I never gave it away. Isn't isn't our God isn't isn't our God he giveth and he taketh away? You know, you've heard me say it. I don't have any money, right? And at church today, a man said, it's all a trial. Everything in your life is a trial. God's trying you out. And it's for you to decide, are you with God? Or are you going to let Satan walk in and take over? Are you going to let him make you depressed? Man, I love that pastor. Man, I love him with all my heart. And I don't think it's him talking. Does that confuse you? So, that lady, and you can say who she is, when I gave her that money, that $20, right away, without pausing, I righted what was wrong in my head for the first time. I declared Jesus Christ immediately. Immediately. She was Jesus Christ. I was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave me the money. And Jesus Christ, in my mouth, said, you can't make the food for me. She looked at me and said, oh, you're a vegetarian? I said, no, I'm a vegan. I don't even eat the cheese. I smiled. And I said, oh, we should champion that here. I should talk about everything that I know about food. Everybody with their cancer and heart attacks. Right? I told that minister there, or the, the pastor, I said, I know a lot of stuff. And I, I, I want you to use me. And I told Kenny there, a man that's really important there, told him to use me and I talked to him for a little bit I might have a church but it's gonna be a long time for that church he's going man they're relentless same number you know your Google ad hasn't blah 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 and man everyone wants your money the Caesar or the tax man everyone wants your money everyone wants your money Give it all away. That's what I say. <laughs> give it all away. Don't give it to the people who ask for it. <laughs> Susie Orman was right. Don't hold your money. Open it up. Give it away. There's, there's massive psychology in that. Right? When you don't attach that to money, you, you disempower what Satan has in store for you and you empower God and God has infinite amounts of everything for you there's no limit on what God can do for you God reached me like no other day with money today I'm ready for anything that he has I'm ready for everything he has if it's a penny I make for the rest of my life I'm gonna thank him for it if it's a billion dollars, I'm going to give it all away. I only want enough to live off of. God bless you all. I love you all so much. May have an awesome day and go love on some people. Like the one lady said at church today, she said, why don't you go to a Kmart parking lot and get out and start talking about Jesus Christ. And look at how many people are going to look at you like you're crazy. Man, I'm t I, I, I can't tell you guys enough. If you want a real, man, a real, real church, if you're reading the Bible and you're believing what they're saying in the Bible, I've been to that church that John talked about, and it's a little bit better. And I've been to the other church out in Troy, and I bet I go to 100 more, but this church is it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's it. The only, thing, the only thing I got them to do now, get, got to get them to do now is... He's declaring he is the Holy Spirit, which I buy into 1,000%. Hello, Jesus Christ. God. The Holy Spirit is God, right? Therefore, 
Jesus was in the image of God. So, boom, it's God. You know? Therefore, why are we sitting in benches? If you're a fresh start ministry, why are we sitting in benches? You know, the Muslims don't sit in benches. They have more respect for, for Allah than we have for God. Really? You should you should you should relax in the presence of your maker. I read the Bible and it says that when you're in the presence of your maker, you can't help yourself but get down on your knees. You'll be on the, your knees in the presence of your maker. So if you go to church and you think that your minister, your pastor, is doing that for you, then why aren't you on your knees with your hands in the air, with your hands on the ground, with your head tucked into your knees like a baby? Anyways, so, yeah, I'm, I'm done with the money, fully. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. If I make it, great. If I don't, that's fine, too. So now I'm going to our van or to Garden of Waiting and I tell that man I can't take a full time job because you want me to work on Sundays. And if I'm going to champion what I believe that I should take all the words in the Bible, like it says, and apply them, then I cannot work on Sunday. I can't. I can't. If I'm going to receive Christ all the time in me, then I have to keep Christ on my lips always. And I know the Bible says keep the Sabbath day holy. So I'm not going to work on Sundays ever again. I'm just going to study and relax and, and be kind and loving on others on Sunday. I'll do no work on Sunday. None. You know what I think I'm going to do? Just like they said at church today, I think I'm going to do that. Since I preach so much about God and, and I feel like Jesus is in me, you know, just like she said at, at church today, he said, you know, or he, maybe he said, I can't remember now. Go to the hospital and visit a bunch of people that are dying if you want to know what being sick is. If you complaining about your pain. I think I might do that. I might, I might go over to Gardner White and tell him I can only work part-time and not on Sundays because that's what that lady said. You know, that she doesn't work on Sundays and she's able to go to church. So.